know, the sound system helps just a little bit, doesn't it? Well, today, the title of the lesson is Understanding the Lord's Will. You know, my son Devin is 10 years old, and I've come to find something out. He knows everything. Devin, you know, the trash can's full. I think you, I know, Dad. <laughs> Devin, don't, don't poke your brother. I, I know, Dad. You know, it seems everything that I say, he says, I know, Dad. And he's got me to thinking. I have a question for you this morning. How much do you know about God? Let's turn over to Ephesians 5. And let's find out. Come on, Ron. We're going to go to Ephesians 5, verse 15. It's incredible scripture here. We read verse 15. Be very careful, then, how you live. Not as wise, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are easy. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So I ask you this morning, how much do you know about God? See, he says to watch your life. Because these days are evil, aren't they? Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. He said, well, what is the Lord's will? Let's turn around to 1 Timothy and see if we can't get a little insight into it. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Come on, Ron. Instructions on worship. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, Intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Right here we come to find some things that God wants for our lives. He wants us to be praying for who? Everyone! Right. And He wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's called world evangelism, guys. Come on. So how, do you, how much do you know about God's will? Well, we come to find out in how we live. Right here he says, to be praying for everyone, that you make your request to God. You know, and, and, and anybody that says a prayer knows about making a request to God. Yeah, right. But do you make every request, every single thing that you want to happen in your life that you're praying about this morning? So he says to make your requests, prayers, intercession. You know, this morning, we have a lot of people that are out sick. You know, this room would be a whole lot more full if Satan wasn't, if the days weren't evil and Satan wasn't attacking with sickness in this congregation. But that's where we have intercession. That's where we pray for other people. That's why we pray for the little ones that are sick. Are you praying for other people? I mean, think about it. What are you praying for in the morning? What are you praying for in the afternoon? What are you praying for in the evening? And then late at night? It says to pray for the kings and all those in authority. Do you pray for Barack Obama? Come on, Obama. You know, do you pray for the policemen that are out there to save our lives and to keep us safe? See, God's will for your life is that you're praying for everyone, not just me. He also wants all men to be saved. Well, how's that going to happen? <laughs> is it going to happen just through osmosis? You know, all of us in this room are so awesome that it will just generate throughout the whole city, right? Come on. <laughs> well, you got to think, if you're visiting with us today, how'd you get here? Somebody invited you to come. 
Because someone understood what the Lord's will is. Amen. Amen. Come on, Ron. That's right. These are instructions in worship. And you know, God created you to worship Him. Yeah. So how are you doing with it this morning? Are you praying for everyone? Good morning. Are you thinking about other people's needs? Are you interceding? Is every request going up to God? You see, there's a phrase that goes all throughout the Bible. In fact, about 33 times. It talks about honor and glory being given to God. And you know, this morning, hopefully we come to find, you know, if we know a little bit about God, right? That we give honor and glory to God. We first give honor to Him with our spirit. That's called our attitude. We give glory to Him, though, through the power of how we live our lives and the outcome of it. The outcome of our lives gives Him glory if we know God's will. Then I ask, that begs the question, well, if our attitude gives Him glory, how is our attitude during tough times? Come on. You know, we all like the, the good times, right? It's real easy to praise God when everything's going good. Yes. You know, you see the celebrities, they get up, and they, they, they just won an Oscar, right? And they're going, praise God! God is awesome! First, first, I want to take a moment to just praise God. <laughs> because I just won my Oscar. <laughs> then, you see, then you see the football player. Yeah. And he gets in the end zone, he just scored and touched it. Yeah! yeah! Praise God! I just scored, baby! Yeah! Church, his wife, wife, 
uh, I mean, he had diabetes. He had uh, not had a great time in the ministry. He had to come out of the ministry. And he just, damn. And, and you know, I remember, there's just one thing, though, that stuck out about Jim in my relationship with him. And that is, he was always praying. And, 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 good times, tough times, it didn't matter. He was always praying. And, and you know, I, I haven't got to confess, even during that time, I was, I was like, man, you're getting into all this sin, you're angry, you're bitter. You know, how can you pray like that and want to lead somebody? Well, he taught me a great lesson. He says, you know what? I don't care what's going on. I'm getting my time at the beach with God. I'm getting my time at late at night with God. And he prayed for everyone and everything. And even through his toughest times, what an example. Let's pray for everyone and everything. Amen? Amen. Now, the second thing I think that we've got to have on straight if we're going to be wise, you know, if we're going to give God honor and glory, is we need to be joyful always. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll begin at verse 16. And I want you to think about, as you're turning there, think about the charge that we got in Romans there. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And that last one we read, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Well, let's see what Paul tells the Thessalonians. In verse 16 he reads, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He goes on to say, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat pro prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. You know, the charge sounds very similar, doesn't it? Be joyful. Pray continually. In verse 15, it says, Make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Come on, Ron. But always try to be kind to each other and everyone else. Because, you know, when we get those tough times, isn't it just hard to get along? Oh, yeah. You know, the first thing we do is we want to pay evil for evil. The first thing we do is we put out the Spirit's fire. You know, in Romans 12 there, there was another piece of that scripture that said... Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. But when tough times come, are you joyful? Do you have the ability to be joyful? And then I ask you the question, how much do you know about God? Do you have the knowledge of the truth as God wants for your life? Well, you'll know this by your spirit. If you're giving honor to God with that spirit, now, how do you handle these tough times? You get in a fight with your wife? How do you handle in that one? Don't Are you joyful? You see, when we're in the Spirit, we understand that these tough times come to teach us things. These, come, these tough times come to test us, to make us better. What about physical challenges? You know, there's many in our congregation that have physical challenges. You know, Ted Jones not here. He's got multiple sclerosis. And he's hurt right now. And he's in bed. He can't get up. But you know what? I pick up the phone and I call Ted. And that man's joyful. He has always got a smile on his face. With all his challenges, I've never seen him dance. How about you? You know, me, myself, I, get, I suffer from migraines. And, uh... They take x-rays, I have to have a dish removed, I have a neck surgery and stuff, and 
They tell me that I have the same amount of degeneration in my spine as a 70-year-old man. So yeah, you see those guys, they're all hunched over because of all the degeneration in their spine? That's the level of degeneration I have. Wow. And so getting up in the morning isn't too much fun. <laughs> and, and, you know, I come to find, like last night, I went to bed at 5 in the morning. And I got up at 7.30. And you know what I found? It's easier physically to get up if I get less sleep. Because the longer I sleep, you know that whole atrophy thing? Yeah, it happens with me real fast. And so it's easier to get less sleep and not be in so much pain. But how do you handle your tough challenges? Your physical challenges? And how about those, those financial challenges? Anybody in here have any financial challenges going on? Yeah, yeah, just a couple people, right? <laughs> Are you joyful with no money? Yeah. <laughs> Are you joyful with debt? Oh, my God. <laughs> you see, God's will for your life is that you are. God's will for your life is that you pray about it. Yeah. That you make the most of every opportunity. But you know what? If you're not praying about it, when the opportunity comes, it goes right on by and you miss it. Yeah. Because you're not joyful. A joyful eye sees every opportunity that God says me. How about you? What do you know about God? Now it makes me think of, uh, of someone, uh, when I think of people who overcome challenges, uh, I don't think there's any other person that I can think about that is a better example to me in my life than my own father. You know, maybe if you met him a couple of weeks ago at the inaugural service, and he's walking around, and he's greeting everybody, he's sat in the front row crying the whole service, you know. And, uh, but you know, most people don't know, he's, both of his legs are cut off. He's walking around on artificial legs. And most people can't even tell. You know, my dad's 68. He's got that same amount of degeneration for real that I have. And you never know it. You know, when you live with somebody, you know their heart, right? You know if they give up on things. You know if they persevere. You know if they complain. And let me tell you, my dad's legs were cut off when I was seven years old. And not one time ever in my entire life have I ever heard him complain once. Not one time ever. You know, you can, you can hear in the room, your parents, you know, like we all went up and listened on the door of our parents' room at some point, right? And you never heard complaining. He's not a perfect man by any means. You know, but he never complained. He's always up. I see him crawling around on the floor and you know, you got to get up in the top cabinet, so you got to get a chair and crawl up on the chair, crawl up on the cabinet to be able to get up and then fall down and laugh and make a joke. You know, what an example. And it makes me think of, you know, a, a, a large group that we have even with our own congregation, single mothers. You know, I want you to imagine one day having three kids and your husband just dies. And you're left with three kids that all have special needs. And that's our sister Mary. You'd never know from her heart. You know, I keep talking about Kimberly Clark as she, as she finds her way to service early. You know, she has fibromyalgia and she gets on the bus and takes the bus everywhere and she beats all of us to church every week. But you know, I've come to see that right along with her, coming across the street, walking in the snow, here comes Marilyn and her three kids. Come smiling and as joyful as can be. How tough's your life? Really? Come uh, on, bro. How tough is it? See, Philippians 4.4 4 tells us, Rejoice in the Lord, what? Always. Always. You know, there, this one's so tough for us, though, I think we need a second scripture. Let's go to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1. God gives us a, a phenomenal amount of encouragement here on overcoming the challenges that we have in our life. And we read in chapter 1, verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. You know, is that your God? Is that what mercy produces in your life? When you think about having God's forgiveness, does it produce a spirit within you that just can't die, that never spoils, that never fades, no matter how tough life gets? You see, it goes on to say that that spirit's kept in heaven for you through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. See, if you know God today, you're going to heaven! That is incredible! Not many people are going. That's what my Bible says. But you get to go. What is that for? Does it drive you to your knees in prayer? Does it keep you on your knees in prayer? You know, I've come to find that we talked about prayer there. I come to find I began kneeling down and praying. Not just praying. And wow, has it given me a lot more reverence. You know, for a man to kneel down is just somewhat humble. Yes, it is. But I found, gosh, man, I, I just understand God a whole lot better when I'm getting down on my knees praying. See, this salvation is supposed to make you rejoice. Not just a little bit, but greatly. It goes on in verse 6 and says, In this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer all kinds of trials. See, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though being refined by fire, may be proved genuine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean I gotta actually prove that my faith is real? I can't just say I believe? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Oh. See, this is done so that may, your faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You see, this is how we give honor and glory to God through our attitude. Through how we handle the tough times. See, when you hit those tough times, that's when it shows your faith is genuine. That's when it shows that it's real. So how about it? How much do you know about God? You go, wow, this is very comfortable. <laughs> this is not very comfortable. Tough times, man, bro. But they're there. To refine you. You know, when you, uh, when you take a piece of coal and you refine it, it's pretty nice when it gets on your, on your ring finger, isn't it? That's what God's doing with you. He's turning you into a precious stone. If you all but honor Him with your attitude. But you know, we're not just spirit. We're spirit and body, right? And so the third thing I think we need to have on straight today is not just honoring God with our spirit, but also giving Him glory with our lives. Amen? Let's turn to Romans 12 again. Because we read the end of that chapter. But I think we also have to read the beginning to get the gems on how to make it happen. Amen? Point number three, the third thing we have is we've got to never be lacking in zeal. You know, I found myself over the last two weeks or so just a little lacking in zeal. Been working real hard, staying up late, pouring myself out. And, and there was even one day, you know, if you can imagine this, from 6 a.m., until 3 a.m. on the phone constantly. I had to charge my phone while I was talking. Because I went from call to call to call to appointment to call to call to call. Driving from here to Eugene and back. Come on, Come on. And at the end of the day, I still had 38 voices of calls I missed. And I went, what the heck, God? <laughs> Call, call, call. And I 
I prayed in the morning. And I kept going from call to call, to appointment to appointment. And, and you know, when we deal with our spirits, it can be kind of emotional, right? And when you don't pray enough, you start lacking in zeal. When you're not joyful, you start being lacking in zeal, you know what I'm saying? And it dawned on me. I'm not keeping up because I'm not praying. I'm not being faithful in prayer. And so we come to learn a principle here in Romans 12, verse 1. So therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. See, this is why God created you. He created you to worship Him. To honor Him. To give Him glory. By keeping your attitude straight. And by pouring yourself out. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, what's the pattern of this world when times get tough? To get down. To get fighting. See that we're paying evil for evil? <laughs> First thing we do, we want to sock somebody. We want to chew somebody out. We want somebody else to get theirs. But it says, do not conform to that pattern. But be renewed. You see, when you know it's God, He transforms you. He transforms your life. It goes on to say, when you do this, right? When you honor Him with your attitude, when you give Him glory with your life, when you're offering your body as a living sacrifice. And by the way, when you're sacrificing, you're dead. When you do that, it says, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So how about it? He says here, in view of God's mercy. Do you really understand mercy? You see, what does mercy have to do with me doing great deeds and working hard for God? Because if you know that you have salvation, if you know you're one of the many few that's making it to heaven, if your mind has been transformed, if your life is truly different, man, you've got to get it out to everybody. That thing that God wants, world evangelism. You're getting it out to everybody. You know, when I think about somebody who's never lacking in zeal, I can't help but think about Tommy and Ruth Come on. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, these guys are like the Energizer Bunnies. Bouncing all around, going to everybody's house, driving everybody around. You know, there are a few people moving this weekend. And here goes Rick and Tommy, off to move, we see ya. And then they get done and they come on over to our house and they help us move. <laughs> and they go, they go all night. And as much as they go, they're never lacking in zeal. It's amazing to me. I mean, Ruth will go to work all day. Take care of her kids all night, sleep two hours, and not be like one seat. That's how you know you got it. That's how you know God, that you know God, is when you're pouring yourself out. You see, we have a body and we have a soul. The mere acknowledgement that God exists, that's not enough. We learned that in James 2. That faith without deeds is dead. But see, God requires that our body, our spirit, our soul are consecrated for Him. See, your true belief is expressed in your attitude and how much honor you give God. And in the power of your life and the glory that you give Him. So today, if you're a disciple, I pray that you understand you have mercy, you have grace. I pray you understand that it's God's will to evangelize this world in this generation, in yours. And I pray that you will push through every tough time that comes in your life, praying continually, being joyful always, and you'll grab hold of that life that's truly life. If you're visiting with us today, I pray that you will sit down with
to study the Bible. Then you will learn the teachings of Jesus. Then to explain to us how to have his power in our lives. And I pray today that all of us will pray for everyone and everything. That we'll be joyful always. And that we will never be lacking in zeal. And if you live like this, then you will understand what God's will is. Have a great time. Yeah.